In this video, you will learn about instancing, something that happens all the time in games and saves us a lot of work. Instancing means reproducing a template. You'll see how you can change a property in a scene and have it update instantly on all instances and more. This video is part of our complete free course to get you started with Godot. You will get to create two complete games from scratch in upcoming videos, so if you don't want to miss out, be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell. Okay, back to scenes. In Godot, scenes are templates from which you can create as many instances as you want. Here's an example with a ball, which you will get to play with in a second. The ball scene is composed of a rigid body node as its root, named ball, which allows the ball to fall and bounce on walls. As a child, we have a sprite node, the ball's picture, and a collision shape 2D, which gives the physics engine a geometric shape to detect when the ball touches something. Once you save a scene, it works as a blueprint. We can reproduce the ball in other scenes as many times as we'd like. Here, it's the main game level, which has some walls on which the balls can bounce and roll. Now, it's your turn to try it out. You'll need to download a file we prepared for you. You can find the link in the description below, and it will download the project as soon as you click it. You want to head to where you saved the zip file and right-click, extract it. Normally, in most operating systems, you can do that. And then I'll import it in Godot. So to do so, I'll copy the folders path and we're going to open Godot in a new workspace on my desktop. So I'll click import and paste the project's path. Then click import and edit to open the Godot project. Here, we land on the main scene. It contains some walls that we'll use to make balls bounce. If you go to the bottom left to the file system doc, you have a ball.tscn file. You can double click to open it and see our little ball here. Let's head back to the main scene where we'll create an instance of our ball. To do that, you can use the icon in the scene doc in the top left. Note that to create an instance, it's like when creating a node, you need to select a parent. In that case, we'll click on the main node. Uh, if you don't and you try to add a scene, you will get an alert like that. So click on the main node and click the scene instance button to get a list of all the scenes you can instantiate in your project. Here, we want to instantiate the ball. It will get added to the origin of the world. Exactly, it will get added at the position of the parent, but the nodes like main and wall container don't have a position. In that case, it gets placed at the origin. So you can select the ball by clicking on it in the scene and make sure you have the select mode selected and click and drag to move it closer to a wall. You can then press F5 to play the main scene and see your ball fall and bounce. All right, we're now going to create a second instance of the scene with a different method. So there are two more. You can click and drag the ball scene in the view or you can click and drag it in the scene dock. Uh, note that you don't want to insert it as a child of the other ball. I'm going to offset it just so you can see that when you have a ball as a child of another, they move relative to one another. So you don't want that. So if that happens, you want to click and drag to move the ball as a sibling of the first one. And you'll see its name changes so they don't have the same name. And now if I move one, it moves independently from the other. So I'm going to move them on either side of the board and press F5 so you can see that they now fall and exist independently. So this is what instances do for you. You create reproductions of a scene and every reproduction is independent from the others, mostly, as you will see. Note that in this project, at runtime, you can click to create new balls. Okay, so that's a start, but we can do much more with scenes and instances. We can change the default property of the ball scene to modify all the balls in there. We can also modify an individual instance to make it different from all the others. So we'll do this now. Open the ball scene by double clicking on ball.tscn or clicking the tab. Select the ball node and in the inspector, we're going to click on the physics material and we're going to modify the bounce property. We're going to crank it up to one. Now, uh, if you press F5, you're going to see that the balls are much bouncier. So we modified a property 
in the source scenes and all the instances got updated accordingly. Note that when you press F5 or F6, Godot is automatically saving everything in your project for you. We can not only do that, but head back to the main scene by clicking the main tab, and we're going to create a new ball that will be different from the others. To do that, a third method is to press Ctrl D and then click and drag to duplicate the selected node. You can also right click in the inspector, click duplicate, you will see the new ball appear there, and then you need to move it by clicking and dragging. So I'll select my ball four, and I want to change the gravity scale, so I'm going to lower it down to one. Now, if we play the game, you will see that three balls are bouncy and falling fast, and one is going super slowly. What we did here is you can see uh, that little cancel or undo arrow, which you can click to revert the value to four. We modified a default property on one instance and one instance only. We can modify any other property in the ball scene and all the balls, including this one, will get modified except for the gravity scale property. And you can do that with all the other properties you can see in the inspector. I have one little disclaimer when it comes to that. It's that physics material here. When we click it, you can see that the color of the outline changes and it's kind of a sub component of our object. To be precise, as we can see in the tab here, it is a resource. Godot uses lots of these objects that are fundamental in Godot projects called resources, which you can attach to nodes. These resources are by default shared by all the instances of the scene. Godot stores one resource in memory and every instance is going to point to that resource. So even if I'm in the main scene, if I change the bounce back to zero and play the game, you will now see that the balls don't bounce anymore, even if this one is falling slower than the others. I modify the resource, which is shared by all the balls. You can make the resource unique on one element. To do that, you right click on the resource's name, so the physics material, and click make unique. You will see now if I expand the resource category, the path disappeared. If I select another ball and go there, you will see that the path is different. Okay, so I'm going to set the bounce up on this ball, the one where I made the physics material unique, and press F5 to play the game. And now you will see that, well, it's really slow, but it's bouncing unlike the others. So you just want to be wary of that with resources. The important part is that resources are shared in memory. They are shared by all instances. In the next video, we'll talk about the five programming languages you can use to script your games in Godot. We'll talk about the pros and cons of each, but more importantly, you will learn what are your options. If you'd like to get more content on our website, you can find a series to get started with Godot. It's different from this one as it really focuses on how to get started as a programmer and shares insights that are really useful, but that are beyond the scope of this video series. It's completely free and you can find a link to it on the screen in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.